In this video, I'll be going over work, energy, and power. We're going to start with one of the kinematic equations, Vf squared equals Vi squared plus do a d and from here we're going to derive the work energy theorem and along the way we'll define work as well as kinetic energy. So what I'm going to do first here is to move the vi squared to the left so we get vf squared minus vi squared equal to 2 a d and then I'm going to move the 2 over I'm going to divide 2 up by on both sides so I get one half multiplied by 1 half there right hand side multiplied by one half. I'm also going to multiply mass on both sides and so on the left I get 1 over 2 mv final squared minus 1 over 2 mv initial squared plus the halves they cancel out and then we also have a mass on the right hand side so we get mad because we're multiplying mass, mass on both sides. And then as a little review, we know that net force is equal to MA. So we're going to substitute F net on the right hand side and also on the left hand side you'll notice this term 1 over 2 MV squared and we have a name for that uh, term uh, which is kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is 1 over 2 MV squared. And so on the left hand side we have the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy equal to the F net times the displacement. So the force times the displacement is equal to the change in kinetic energy of an object. And kinetic energy we can think of that as the energy of motion. We can also write this as delta Ke is equal to work. To be more specific, we're talking about net work. There could be more than one force acting on an object, uh, but the net work is equal to the change in kinetic energy of the object. And we have a name for this relationship, and we call this the work energy theorem. So I'd like to take a moment and talk a little bit more about work. So work is defined as the force times the displacement acting on object, but it's specifically the component of the force that is parallel to the displacement. Now to be able to account for that, we're going to multiply by cosine theta. The unit for work is joules. The unit for force is newtons. The unit for displacement is meters. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have a box here and it's moving towards the right and we're pushing it with a force of two newtons and the displacement is 0.5 meters. So to calculate the work it's simply the force 2 times 0.5 cosine and here the angle cosine theta is the angle between the force and the displacement and here it's zero because they're in the same direction so the work is just one joule. So let's say that an object is moving towards the right but the force is towards the left. Now you might wonder how that could be. Well maybe there's friction and so maybe there's friction and so the force is towards the left and let's use two newtons again. The displacement is to the right so 0.5 meters. The work this time is 2 times 0.5 cosine 180 and cosine 180 is going to be negative 1 and so the work here is going to be negative 1 joule. So when you have a negative work, it just means that the force and displacement are in opposite direction. So this displacement is towards the right. And just a reminder that work is a scalar, but it can be negative if the work and the displacement are in opposite directions. Now let's take a look at what would happen if we have an object and we're pulling it at an angle. So now it's 
at an angle of two newtons and an angle of 40 degrees. Displacement towards the right of 0 0.5 meters. The work is going to be 2 times 0.5 cosine 40. And because it is at an angle, it's not going to be 1 joule. It's actually going to be about 0.77 joules of energy. All right, one more example here with work. Uh, so let's say that you were holding a box uh, and the force you're pushing up uh, on the box with is, uh, we'll just call it an F, and we're walking across the room and so the box is moving towards the right. So how much work is done on the box by the hand? So the force times D, the displacement, cosine, and notice the angle here is 90 degrees. Now cosine 90 degrees is zero and so that means that the work done on the box is zero. So the work done on a, on an object is going to be zero if the force and displacement are 90 degrees. Next we'll look at power. So power is how quickly you do work and it's defined as the work divided by the time. The unit for power is watts and unit for work is joule and unit for time is second. So a watt is joules per second. Since work is force times displacement, we can also write power as equal to the force times displacement divided by the time. And if you remember from our previous video, uh, displacement divided by the time is velocity. So another way to calculate power is going to be force. If you have a constant force, it's going to be the force times the velocity. So we've got two ways to calculate power. Now conceptually, I want you to think of power as how quickly uh, energy is being transformed. So how quickly you're doing work or how quickly energy is being transformed. That's what we mean by power. So your light bulb has a certain number of wattage. Maybe it says 15 watts or 60 watts. Uh, that's telling you how quickly energy is being transformed from electrical energy into light energy. In the next video, we'll work through work and energy problems.